Happy New Year, friends. The grace and peace of Christ be with your spirit. As we begin 2024, we find ourselves reflecting and aspiring. The beginning of a new year can serve as a marker for new beginnings. It allows us to pause and reflect on the paths we've traveled the past year and the lesson we've learned. And with hope-filled hearts, we turn to the future, ready and resolved to embrace all the possibilities. Many of us will personally use the beginning of a new year as an opportunity to set resolutions, envisioning and planning for what we hope to do and who we hope to be in a year. Resolution shares its root with the word resolve, which means to decide firmly on a course of action or firm determination to do something. Jesus' ministry was one to resolve. In Luke 9, 51, we read, As a time drew near for him to ascend to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. The message translation reads it like this, He gathered up his courage and steeled himself for the journey to Jerusalem. Jesus was firmed and determined in his course of action. As local churches, laity, clergy, and annual conferences, we can also be collectively resolute in our course of action. We are resolved to multiply Jesus' followers. Our mission as United Methodists remains to make followers of Jesus Christ for the world's transformation. But what we're resolved to do is to multiply Jesus' followers. We resolve to encourage and equip Jesus' followers of all ages with the tools to multiply themselves. We resolve to be prayerful followers of Jesus who model life worth living and live out a transformed life in front of a broken world for God's glory. This year, we resolve to offer all a relationship with Jesus Christ and a compelling vision to follow. Second, we are resolved to champion children and youth. This is a big undertaking, but a most critical and missional one. Jesus put children at the center of his ministry. He welcomed and cared for children, and so must we. So as followers of Jesus, we resolve to enrich and support the spiritual, emotional, and social needs of children and youth and their families in the year to come. We will recruit and equip laity to serve as children and youth ministers and develop outreach initiatives to reach unchurched children and youth with the gospel and ministries that empower, advocate, alleviate suffering, and heal. We will advocate for young people's safety and security and church environments where children and youth feel valued, respected, connected, and heard. Third, we are resolved to maximize care and healing. Everywhere we look, we see the impact of depression, guilt, loneliness, addiction, stress, anxiety, division, and strife. But as a church, we are uniquely equipped to speak hope and life in the face of these ills. This year, we resolve to offer systems of support, resources, and training that lead to wholeness and human flourishing. Fourth, we are resolved to pursue and embrace diversity. You know, we live in one of the fastest growing and diversifying parts of the country. The nations of the world no longer live only across oceans and international borders. The people of the nations of the world live right next door. Jesus tells us to go and make followers for him who confess him as Lord, put their whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as Lord of themselves and of the nations. So to be a church of Jesus followers in this racially and culturally diverse demographic landscape that reflects Christ's openness and inclusion of people of all ages, nations, and races, we resolve to grow in our cultural awareness and understanding. We will learn to build relationships with people from different cultures and appreciate diverse customs, traditions, and values to establish connections based on mutual respect and shared experiences. We will become aware of our own cultural lens to reduce our bias and prejudice. Last but not least, we are resolved to tell our story. We're going to move towards Christ's vision of a loving, just, and free world for all people. And we'll resolve to take the message of God's hope and invitation into a transformed life guided by faith in Jesus Christ beyond the walls of our churches and into our communities. We resolve to move beyond the narrative of disagreement and conflict and division and instead lift stories of hope, grace, and healing. 
We resolved to see these stories in the news outlets and headlines and to equip members to become storytellers, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ person to person. So I'm excited about the potential that is ahead of us this new year and all it holds for us. There is so much opportunity to live into these priorities, these resolutions, every day in the coming year. And you know what? We are poised to build on our solid foundation, unifying and aligning our conferences, gifts, talents, and resources to do this important work in new, thoughtful, and effective ways. So as 2023 ends, I want to celebrate your dedication and great year of ministry. You have shaped Jesus' followers of all ages through your congregation's nurturing and outreach ministries and provided a strong, needed witness for Christ in the world. You've cared for individuals and families' emotional and spiritual needs during most challenging times. You've met needs in your community through your outreach ministries of compassion and mercy and justice. And for all of this, Jesus rejoices and God is glorified. Together with you, I look forward to the even greater things that God will do through us in the next 12 months. So may God, who knows how to give good things to those who ask, may God give us strength, bless us, and multiply the life-giving ministry entrusted to us by Christ for His glory. Have a great year. Peace.